Welcome to the NTD Technical Corner. Today I have the pleasure to be joined by Martin Page from Hydrofeed. Martin, welcome to the Technical Corner. Thank you. Martin, you've now introduced a long bar feeder range to your automated solutions. Um, it's got some very unique um, selling points. Um, but firstly, can you just give us a, a, a very brief overview on the long bar feeder range and tell, us, tell our audience why you've introduced this to your portfolio of products? Okay. So Hydrofeed were traditionally known for their short magazine bar feeds. The company has evolved over the past few years, as you know, to offer a wider range of automation products for both turning and milling. Long magazine bar feeds seem to, nat seem to be a natural progression. A year or more ago, Top Automazioni offered, their, uh, offered the agency to ourselves. We visited them and we were very, very impressed with the quality of the bar feed and, as you say, the innovative features of it. The biggest feature being the need for no additional guide channel sets which are traditionally associated with that bar feed. Now what does that mean? The guide channel sets, set, what, what savings do you get from this particular uh, USP? This is, this is massive. So it, it is, could... it is. So, so traditional bar feeds of this type need a guide channel set to support a range of bars. So if you're running 10 to 20 or 20 to 40 mil bar, you would then have to have a different guide channel to support that bar correctly. With the Top Automazioni equipment, you don't need that. The two bar feeds, the X-Files and the Fusion, cover the full range of bars. So the X-Files will cover from 10 to 100 mil. The Fusion is from 5 to 52. So they cater for those two big blocks, but neither of them need additional guide channel sets. What they do is they have a programmable guide sound channel set that opens and closes upon command from the HMI screen on the front of the bar feed. Therefore, bar change time from being upwards of an hour can be as little as two minutes, whether it's top end of 70 millimetres down to bottom end of 10 millimetres, whatever you want. And how often would an engineer look to change the bar? Well, there lies the problem, Gio, because where we're f what we're finding is when we talk to our prospective customers and our customers about it, they really enjoy that feature because operators don't want to change the guide channel sets. If they don't and the bar vibrates, the only way to stop the vibration, turn the RPM down, which therefore increases your cycle time. You don't have those issues with the top automation equipment because you give it that information and it's done by the time you've got the bar ready to put onto the magazine. Now you mentioned vibration, that is such a big feature. Now you've got six points of contact, I believe, there with are. the guide channel sets. Can you show our audience yes, of course. You know, how, how they work in regards to design? So these are the points of contact that run along the length of the bar feed. So as they open and close and they're programmed to open and close, depending upon the diameter of the bar. So as you can see, this one is a 70 mil guide channel set and it would open to its maximum of 70 down to the minimum of around about 10 millimetres. And this is made from high wearing rubber. It's a vulcanite type rubber and they're distributed along the length of the bar feed, which we can see here now. Instructions are easily given, different diameters. They open and close. Once it's done, once it's given information via the HMI, it's set. And it is that simple. I think that simplicity is the key here. You can't believe that you'd have to change guide channel sets when you've got a design such as, as this available. I mean, the setup time reductions are, are, are massive. And, massive, yeah. Um, the programming that I've just seen on the screen there as well, Martin, this plays a big part, I assume. Oh, absolutely. The, the HMI screen on the front, by giving it the diameter and the material variant, the bar feed is then automatically set to know at what speed, at what torque, what diameters the guide channel are to be set at and that that's pretty much it that is it you just load the bar on change the collets the collets are very very quick to change it's just a simple pin that pushes out another one pushes in these two collets i have here can be designed to feed tube so that again this is vulcanite if you've got tubing you can simply turn the tube turn the, the end of the collet down and it will feed the tubing the the whole bar feed is is manufactured to increase spindle uptime. They're so heavy. As we can see here on this bar feed here, there's a 70 millimeter bar running in there at 4,000 RPM. It's as stable as any piece of equipment as we've seen. It's shown on the screen there, 4,000 RPM. Um, 
they're, they're proven throughout Italy. They are the first choice in Italy. They're not particularly well known over here, but all of the machine tool companies here are fitting them throughout mainland Europe. C certainly got, certainly got flexibility with Absolutely. this bar feeder. And you mentioned, you know, the base, the construction, the build quality. Mm. Again, we've got the bar in the machine now or in the bar feeder. You know, you've got your six points of contact with your guide channel sets, which is re reducing any vibration there. But now let's talk about the weight and the, the construction of the actual bar feed. How does that eliminate vibration? What's the importance of that, Martin? OK, well, you, you can see from the video that we're watching here that the bar feed is of an extremely robust build. The weight is in the top of the bar feed to absorb any vibration that may come from that bar. These bar feeds are traditionally around about a ton heavier than bar feeds of a comparable type. Designed primarily that way to absorb any vibration that the Vulcanite points of contact, six points of contact can't absorb. Um, it's a bit of a nuisance moving around the workshop, but the benefits far outweigh oh, that. It's, it's a very important feature. Now with, with the collet and the remnant, um, you know, we're talking about material and staying on the theme of the material, you know, remnant plays a big part as well. You know, how do you manage that remnant? Has it got remnant? Retract? Yes, it has. Yeah, the, the, bar, the bar remnant can be managed in a number of ways. Again, there is an innovative standard feature with the bar feed. Let's talk about standard bar remnant. It can be retracted back into the bar feed, deposited in the bar remnant box within the confines of the machine. Equally so, it can be ejected by loading the next bar out the front, as long as it's not too long. However, the, another standard innovative feature of this bar feed is if the remnant, if a customer is manufacturing his own parts and the remnant is not long enough to manufacture the part that the machine is programmed to, it will then notify the machine that it has a remnant long enough to manufacture a part of a lesser length. So the bar remnant can then be utilised to be further minimised, thereby minimising the bar wastage, if you understand what I mean. So if he's making a family of parts that are 50, 130, 40 mil long, and the bar feed will recognise that it can make another one of those parts from that family, it will swap programme, work with the machine, make another part to minimise the length of the remnant. Well, that's brilliant. Great idea. Really innovative. Now, um, in regards to material and staying on the theme to the material of material, you know, if you're kind of looking to load lots of different bars during a shift, do you have kind of any st uh, material storage for fa facilities on, on on the bar feeders? Yes, there are. There are uh, there are a number of facilities. Uh, standard would be as as we can see here. Uh, there's a standard bar feed has a as a single layer here. What we're looking at here is the. Uh, forklifter arrangement so that although we're seeing an operator load the bars these bars if they were heavy bars upwards to 100 mil could be loaded by the forklift the bar feed would then simply load the bar into the bar feed without any necessity for additional uh, fork trucks or loading uh, of that bar in, a, in, a, in addition there's a treble layer so that we can get upwards of three different layers and these arms simply flick out the way to allow three layers of bar to be put in. Above that is a bundle loader. So simply is exactly what it says it is. It's a bundle of bars which is bought in front of the machine via the fork truck, loaded on a belt, and the bar feed then loads up to two tons of bars at any time. Martin, absolutely fantastic product. Thank you. Just to round up now, really, what machines do these bar feeders uh, lend themselves to and some of the applications? Okay, so we have the three models. So the X-Files is predominantly a fixed head machine, up to 100 mil bar diameter down to 10. Fusion from 5 to 52, fixed head. There is, a, there is a sliding head model of the Infinity, works on exactly the same way with the Vulcanite guide channels, up to 35 millimeters of bar. There is a traditional bar feed called the Beta, which does offer, if customers so prefer, to change guide channel sets. So that is the family. X-Files and Fusion are the automatic bar feed for fixed head. Infinity, automatic bar feed for slider. And Beta is the traditional model, which most customers are used to from 
what they're already being supplied with. Martin, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for this real technical review into the long bar feeders now available from Hydrofeed in the UK.